So Facebook just announced three new devices that go inside your home, have the potential to record everything that's said, video and audio, and they're selling them at very attractive prices. We're talking about Facebook Portal today and their new lineup. Um, I'm Jason Cipriani with Jason Perlow. This is Jason Squared. And let's dive right into Facebook Portal. Jason, uh, what do we know about what Facebook announced today? Well, they got three different devices that they're releasing at three different price points. Uh, there is the regular Portal, which is at $179, the Portal Mini, which is $129, and the Portal TV, which is $149. These are very similar devices to Amazon Echo Show's line of things, as well as uh, Google's Nest. I think, what do they call that? That that desktop device. I forgot. It's a, it's a Nest. The Home Hub, Home Max. Hub, hub, Nest Hub, I think is what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Nest Hub after the rebranding. Yeah, so the three new devices are, are kind of similar to what they Facebook announced last year with the portal, except there's a new uh, design, there's a new form factor in that it looks like a picture frame. Uh, there's a 10 inch model, there's a portal, eight inch model for the portal mini. And then there's a little, almost like Microsoft Connect looking bar that you can put on top of your TV or below um, that just integrates with your TV and uses the display of your TV. Now these, these devices don't launch for a little bit. I think the Portal and Portal Mini launch October 15th. The TV launches sometime in November. Uh, but so what they allow you to do is hold face uh, video calls, face-to-face -face video calls through WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, uh, as well as use Alexa built in. Uh, you can watch Prime videos on them. You can use them to search with Alexa, as well as interact with uh, Facebook Messenger's AR games. You know, they put stuff on your face and you could actually play sports games with it. And on the surface, they look really fun and interactive and pretty neat technology. But there's kind of an elephant in the room here and that's something Facebook doesn't like to talk about a whole lot, and that's privacy. What do, what do we think here? Well, I mean, again, I, I love the technology that's built into these things. I think also that uh, there's an Amazon Alexa smart agent built into all these, you know, makes these or easier purchases to justify in terms of the ecosystems that it can hook up to for home automation. Um, but um, as we've seen, you know, with Facebook, you know, they are a company that makes all their money on advertising and selling data uh, to various advertisers and such. Um, we know that their APIs have been abused by com companies like Cambridge Analytica in the past. Um, they've had multiple leaks of, of different customer data over the years. Uh, I think there's a huge confidence issue with using Facebook as your, your home automation um, and, and communications hub, frankly. In Facebook's defense, they're being a little bit more upfront with it this time on the portal, especially everything we've gone over the last year, year and a half, two years with Facebook and their privacy mishaps and the stuff that keeps coming out. Um, specifically for Portal, what they're saying now is, you know, a few weeks ago, a month ago, uh, Apple, Google, Facebook all got caught uh, using live human beings to analyze your recorded voice interactions with Siri, Google Assistant, and even in Facebook Messenger. Facebook is, had put the program on hold. Now they're saying they're going to turn it back on or kick it back up. And with Portal, they're gonna give users the option to opt out of having a human being um, analyze and see how accurate your voice command was to Portal. So with Portal, you say, hey Portal, and then interact with it. It's kind of like Alexa or Siri or whatever it is. Um, so that's one step they're taking. And also built into all of these devices is a, a switch that turns off the microphone and then an actual physical cover for the camera. So that's supposed to be, you know, an added layer peace of mind going into the privacy uh, part of having a mic that's always listening and a camera that could potentially always be on. There are lights that are supposed to turn on when the camera is active, but you know, you never know exactly what's going on uh, with that kind of stuff, especially, you know, in, in today's time uh, where it's easy to hack IoT stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's an IoT exploit out every single week, practically for every, you know, vendor product in existence. Um, you know, all the InfoSec people are always tracking this stuff constantly. So it's, it's, it's definitely a huge concern. Yeah, so, you know, 
with how Facebook has handled data in the past and how they've tried to somewhat cover it up, uh, what do we think? Uh, let's start with you, Jason. Would you buy a portal and put it in your home? No, absolutely not. And, and this is coming from somebody who is a heavy Facebook user. I run huge Facebook groups with thousands of people in it. Um, you know, multiple communities for different things. I use Facebook Messenger all the time as my main text engine with, with my wife and friends, you know, whenever we want to have group chats. Um, I like the features of Facebook Messenger. I like the fact you get attached GIFs and, and, and files and things and links. And, and, it's, and it's a very rich texting platform. Um, and I like, you know, using Facebook. I like getting update feeds from friends and things like that. But I don't want it all over my house. I like it on my smartphones. I like it on my personal computers. I like it segregated into those areas. I don't want it sitting everywhere in every room of my house. I absolutely don't want it sitting on my nightstand, um, you know, where it can pop up at all hours of the day or in the evening. I mean, like, I don't like it, in fact, for even when I forget to put my phones on D and D sometimes, um, and, and I and I get them, you know, popping up in the middle of the night and stuff. I I'm, I hope I would hope that a device like that would be intelligent enough to, not to not to wake people up in the middle of the night because of the constant updates that come in through Facebook. You're getting hundreds and hundreds of them at any time. Yeah, I look. I'm torn. I don't trust Facebook. I haven't for years. I really dislike that I do have to use Facebook, whether it's Messenger yeah. or, you know, the main news feed to keep up with stuff for friends and family that, you know, are spread out throughout the country and the world sometimes. I am very tempted by Portal because of the technology that it, that it uses. Look, they do some really interesting and cool stuff with the video calls. For example, they use AI, artificial intelligence, to follow you around the room and now it's not going to be a complete 180 degree following you around the room but the video is going to zoom in as you walk through the frame and make sure that you're always centered and you're in frame i think we've all had facetime calls or skype calls or whatever you know platform you use where you have to step out of the frame for a second because you're doing something while you're talking to someone to me it is super appealing to do little things like that right it feels like this is something that apple should have done already with even just facetime on a mac Right? We should be able to have the artificial. You know, I, I hate video calling. I, I, and I, I've written articles in the past about why I believe as a, as a technology, it has failed. And it's not because of the, of the underlying technology stack. We have excellent bandwidth right now for video calls. We've had excellent bandwidth for video calls for 20 years. Um, it doesn't, you know, for the type of video calling that we needed to do uh, at lower resolutions and things like that, we've had plenty of bandwidth to do that. Now we have you know, 100 megabit connections and higher people with gigabit connections like myself. It's a non-issue. The issue is really a, a, a telepresence type of an issue of people worrying about the way they look. Like I don't like the fact that we we're doing this video conference right now and I'm like, you know, I haven't shaved and stuff, but you know, that's fine. Um, but you know, that, 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 you, that people can just pop into your life anytime you want. And you know, look, I used to work in corporate environments where we had the Cisco phone, uh, IP phones in every desk that had video capability. Nobody ever used the video capability. If a video chat came in on one of those things, people would be like, what the hell is this, right? Sure. Um, and the thing is, look, we've seen video chatting, you know, before there could be video chatting in, in, in science fiction movies and Star Trek, you know, they got the main viewer, the, you know, the alien comes up on the screen and says, you just invaded our space, we're gonna blow you out of the sky. Or, you know, Blade Runner and, all, and 2001 A Space Odyssey. And the promise of video, of video calling has existed for a long time, even before we had the capability. But in reality, when we use this, who's really using this? I mean, like moms to check up on their kids, you know, grandparents to check up on their grandkids, but most adults that I know do not use video calling routinely because they just don't want the intrusion into their lives. No, I agree with that 100%. Let me preface what I said earlier or back up to it and say that I use video calling all the time when I travel. I check in with my wife, I check in with my kids. It's a good way for me to still yeah. be present and be there. And for that reason, I would, I would consider a portal. Am I going to go out and buy one? Probably not because of all the privacy stuff that Facebook has tagged along with it, you know, and the history it has, they would really have to go on a good tear of proving that privacy really does matter. I mean, we've all seen the, the screenshot of Zuckerberg standing in front of the backdrop at the last F8 keynote that says, trust us or trust me. 
no. I, I mean, you messed up like three weeks after that. We're, the trust isn't there, and it's going to take a long time to earn that back. I, like I said, I really would go after the Portal Mini, I think, just because it's smaller. I enjoy the picture frame, the digital picture frame. We have so much stuff in Facebook as far as pictures and videos go. It's a great way to have that constantly on display. But at the end of the day, when it comes to putting my hard-earned money down, I don't think I'm going to get a Portal. I, I don't think I would um, at all. Especially, let's talk about Portal TV. That's something that's watching you watch TV all day long. Like, that's very I can weird. Putting something in the kitchen, like Portal Mini, and having a, a display there, but having a camera pointed at you the entire time you're watching TV, there's something kind of weird there. I, I, it just doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, you know, Skype did that. A couple other companies have done that where they have like these video conferencing right. systems for consumer use where basically you have a camera sits on top of your TV and it's a little box that's plugged in. Lots of vendors have tried doing this. Um, you know, it, you could even do it with the Xbox for, for a while. And I believe, yeah. you know, when they had their, when Xbox had that camera, tr crazy tracker camera thing. Yeah, that, the Connect that has now been shrunk down into the notch on the iPhone. Essentially, yes. Yeah. So the question is, why do we need those things attached to everything that we own when we have perfectly good smartphones to, to do this with ad hoc when we want it, right? So I, I think it's a question of, of, of technology application. I certainly don't want cameras turned on all the time. That, that just scares the crap out of me. There's just so much potential for, for abuse by you know, actors and such that, that you know, could get having access to some API gets leaked for tr waking a camera on. I mean, half the time, I, don't, I mean, look, how many people don't walk around fully clothed in their homes when no one else is around, right? You know, that's, you know, I, I, you know what I'm talking about, right? So like, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally understand it. A camera is a, a Look, we have private, intimate conversations inside the walls of our home. The, that audio was one thing. Having, having visuals to that audio is, is a whole nother level. And to be fair, the cameras aren't on all the time. But like we kind of talked about briefly for a second there, IoT is a mess in and of itself. And like you said, all it takes is one API or one. You could have a whole discussion about why. IoT has failed as a concept in terms of integration with other vendors and things like that. But that's a really discussion for another day. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll tackle that here in the next coming week or two. Um, any final thoughts on, on Facebook portal, Jason? Yeah, I don't want one. I, I, it, it, <laughs> burn it with fire. Nuke it from orbit, that's the only way to be sure. I, uh, yeah, I, look, I love the technology. I love the idea. I hate the, the brand name that is attached to it. And hate isn't probably the right word, but I, I dislike the brand name that is attached to it. If this was from Apple um, and maybe yeah. even Amazon, it would be a no-brainer. But, you know, I, I, as for me, I'm going to pass on the portal for now as well. And I think that pretty much wraps up everything about Facebook portal. I'm Jason Cipriani. I'm Jason Perlow. And this is Jason Squared. Make sure to find us on ZDNet.com.